So the DJI Avada 1, a lot of you guys bought this one. There was a lot of issues that we brought up and the recent release of the DJI Avada 2, it also has its own issues with durability and some strange flight phenomena that is happening on the roll axis of the Avada 2. There is, seems to be some twitch as well as even what I call the roll lock bug. Uh, and you can see that in my original video for the Avada 2 if you look back on our channel. But in today's video, we're gonna compare, straight up compare the flight characteristics of the Avada 1 versus the Avada 2. And we're also gonna compare the DJI 03 footage as well as the DJI 04 right next to each other on the screen so you can see it and you can see what the difference is, how much better DJI 04 is versus the 03. And I've chosen an environment right here that has a strong sun and dark shadows. So we're gonna see the light to dark transition as well and how it handles super high contrast to where we're flying under thick canopy. So this would be a great test for variation of footage on each camera system so that you know which one that you might want to buy. Let's go ahead and do some flying with the Avada 1 first and we'll pull up the Avada 2 and we're gonna fly the same route with both of these drones. So the first thing we're gonna get into here is camera quality. The DJI Avada versus the Avada 2. The DJI 03 at 4K is 60 frames per second and the DJI 04 at 4K is 60 frames per second. You know, and as you can already see right here in the sunlight, along the path here, you can see true to color for the DJI 04. The Avada is very blown out and it seems to be oversaturated. Uh, and the brightness is bumped way up where the Avada 2 has more of a GoPro feel to it. And when you get underneath the trees, is really where you start to see that some of the shadows and the dark points and the black points are also a little bit darker. Uh, but really, I'm gonna leave that up to you. You can really see the, the definition difference between the 04 and the 03, it's drastically different. You can see more definition and clarity in the grass. If you look down low to the ground, you can really start to see some of that beautiful detail in the grass. And when you get close up to things, that's where you really start to see the big difference between the 03 and the 04. It seems to be more of a professional style camera and less of just kind of a go out and point and shoot type of video camera. So this system definitely is a major upgrade in the realm of 4K video. Next up, we're gonna check out the sky and the horizon comparison of the 03 and the 04. And what we've seen from years past, older sensors don't handle really high up into the sun type of filming. And this is a real example of where you can see this in action. The DJI 03 just doesn't quite give me all the cloud definition and it has a lot of blowout when you're up high and you're facing the sun. The DJI 04 has a newer sensor, a little higher resolution, and it handles this contrast a little bit better as you can see the clouds off in the distance and the horizon definition much better on the 04 versus the 03. So you're getting a major advantage for filming up high with the DJI 04 versus the DJI 03. And now it's time for sport mode speed comparison of the DJI Avada 2, which I'm flying here with the motion controller. And you can see it's a handful in sport mode. So if you're brand new, do yourself a favor, find yourself a big open field, lots of sunlight, no wind, and just go for it. This field is close in and proximity flying with this in sport mode, it's a little bit fast for this space. I have to remember to turn hard here and I blew out off the end of that curve. So I had to let go of the throttle. If you're a beginner, remembering to let go of the throttle at high speed is critical. So you have to let go of the throttle switch that you're holding with your index finger. Um, not pulling back on the stick, that'll just make you go up. So don't forget, it does have GPS that will come to a complete stop like it did for me, but it is extremely fast and there's a lot to remember when you're first starting flying a drone. Now let's look at the DJI Avada, the original one. We're in sport mode here and it's it feels as fast at first, but you'll begin to notice that it's nowhere near as fast as the DJI Avada 2. And even though I'm flying the DJI FPV controller 2, I have very good control and at a little bit slower speed it allows me to just kind of rip around this park make this curve right here without blowing out and continue on my fpb path without a lot of uh, unknown unseen blowout type of things um, that happens in fpb racing where you have too much speed you're taking a tight corner 
and you just lose that corner. Same thing with something like a 1969 Mustang. You're better off with the Avada 1 as a beginner. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test of the Avada 1 and the Avada 2. Uh, let's, let's talk about after the fact. Um, first thing I want to get into after you saw the flight videos and the A and B and of the different types of flight modes on both of these different aircrafts is the performance and the difference between the motion controller and the sticks. The DJI Vada 1 was flown with the regular transmitter, FPV transmitter 2 with the sticks. And I have the most comfort with that style of flying because I've never really flown the motion controller until recently and I find it kind of awkward. Um, eventually you're going to be flying sticks. If you fly drones for uh, say more than a few years, you're probably going to end up with some type of radio controller, whether it be a radio master boxer or something like that. Uh, if you've watched the channel, you probably know what that radio is. It works with a variety of different drones, but unfortunately it doesn't work with DJI stuff yet. Hopefully, cross your fingers in the future, maybe they'll make that compatible with SBUS style receivers. That would be like the greatest gift to the FPV community. Um, but also, we want to talk about the speed of both of these. The Avada 1, even in the sport mode, is much slower. It's a smaller airframe. It has a little less power to it. And the DJI Avada 2 is drastically faster. Um, and in combination with the remotion controller, I've been seeing a lot of crashes and uh, durability compromise with the prop guards. They are really thin. They almost feel like the same type of plastic that's on like the, the DJI Mini 4. It's like eggshell thin and it is hollow. These prop guards feel maybe a little thicker and it seems like they have a different finish on them as well. So I don't know if that's a more uh, industrious plastic on the Avada 1 or not, but the Avada 1 is much slower. If you are a beginner, I would suggest starting out with the Avada 1. And if you're only flying proximity flying, like around this type of flying, this is gonna be very easy for you. And with the stick, I would get the stick transmitted. The DJI FPV transmitter 2 works great. Um, and it will teach you how to fly with sticks, which I think is important. Um, motion controller, if that's something you really want to get into, the handheld remote, and that's all you want to stick to, that's fine. No pun intended, stick, right? Um, so in case in point, the DJI Avada 1, it does fly a lot slower and it's more controllable in a, in a tighter park like this one with all these different trees and the path that we followed in sport mode, I was still able to keep it on the path and in sport mode with the Avada 2, I was off the path and headed toward a house. Um, so I, I now understand why people are having crashes with the Avada 2 much more in this version than the version 1. Now the version 1 flying in Acro was a disaster. You guys can go back and watch that video uh, from uh, almost a couple years ago now. Uh, this one I mentioned on the design, the engineering of this seemed to be designed around a giant battery. It was very top heavy. It had a very small airframe for how much weight they had on top of it. And I mentioned that I predicted a lot of this tumble that was happening and causing this thing to fall down the side of cliff faces into the water. Um, other problems with that as well, that flying diving down the side of mountains. But that's not what this was made for. This one is what the Avada 1 should have been, you know, almost two years ago now, um, in my opinion. If they had done their market research, DJI, I know they, they create consumer products, but if they had done the FPV community market research in Cinewoot category, they probably would have produced something like this instead of something like this. Now, this is still great for real estate and you know, SWAT teams are using these to clear houses and police departments. We just had someone, uh, a team go after a guy recently here in Portland where uh, they were trying to find a guy who was in a basement and they actually showed an Avada one flying uh, on the news, which was pretty cool. They went and uh, tried to find the bad guy with the Avada because they can be flown in a very controlled, tight space. And if you let go of the throttle a little bit, let go of the sticks, it will stop right what it's doing and it'll stay in one spot. And that's the sweet thing about both of these, really. When, when I got in that situation with the Avada two, I came off that path. I just backed off the sticks. I was headed for the backyard 
uh, off the park. So this thing will immediately stop what it's doing, even in that sport mode. Now, if you're flying in the acro mode or manual mode, that's gonna be a whole different story. And if you're flying in, in manual mode with either of these two quads, I definitely suggest starting out in a big open field with no trees around you, okay? Because you're gonna probably break something and end up having to use your DJI care. Um, so hopefully you learned something today about flight characteristics. And the next thing we can talk about is the camera quality. The DJI O3 is great. It changed the face of FPV and we really didn't need to put a GoPro on it anymore. Uh, I, I think that the quality is pretty good indoors and outdoors, even full sun conditions. You can get Freewell filters that go on the front of this and we'll use an ND filter system on it and, and make it nicer. Uh, I feel like the DJI 04 system from what I've seen in my flying so far and the Goggles 3 looks a lot amazingly different. Looks better than Goggles 2 obviously with the new Oculus system uh, 4, uh, OcuSync 4. DJI 04 is also looking beautiful and really impressive. Uh, in the camera view. So you can tell there's a lot more definition than the G DJI 04 type of footage, uh, 4K at 60 frames per second versus the original DJI 03. Now we're still going to be waiting in comparison. Uh, hopefully we can compare sometime soon when they release the DJI 04 VTX module. I would love to see that happen. Uh, we do have some pretty cool products coming up for review and uh, my experience with some new DJI gimbals. Uh, there's a company making some pretty cool little three axis gimbals for DJI 03 now that you can include in your FPV quad builds, which would be, you know, pretty fun. And again, it's experimental, but it's cool that there is a little gimbal coming out for the standalone DJI 03 systems. So you'll have to stay tuned on the channel so I can show you that coming up. Um, very cool thing. But Again, today it was all about experimenting again on the channel and testing, and I'll continue to test the uh, DJI Avada 2, and maybe we'll do some more comparisons between the Avada 1 and the Avada 2 in different flight locations. Uh, but today was a very interesting test because we had full sun underneath the trees, in the shadow, the light and darkness contrast, how that transition works out is really important to see when you're trying to choose a camera system. Um, some of them have really uh, overexposed type of experience when the camera comes out back into the sunlight. It blows out and then it comes back. So this one, the 04, doesn't have as much dark to light transition issues. Uh, so it's definitely, you know, it's a definitely an upgraded system right here and it's doing a lot better. Uh, so if you decide to spend the extra money and you want the best camera you can get right now on the Cinewoop, that's definitely gonna be an option unless you, you do a D-Case GoPro on top, but you could run both. And if you're doing real estate and other type of professional types of videos, I always suggest that clients put an extra camera on top. Just simply put a, a GoPro mount up front, stick it down, and if you're using a D-Case GoPro, you can have a backup camera system. Um, sometimes one camera system may fail and DJI doesn't usually fail, but there's always situations where you're going to come home, your footage is somehow going to be corrupted. You didn't press stop on the, uh, uh, you know, on the on the remote before you turned it off, something like that. The GoPro will repair that file uh, if you do that. So that's the good thing about a GoPro as well. It'll repair the file if you forget to press stop on the record button. But again, I appreciate you hanging out, guys. I'm Justin Davis. Please do subscribe on the channel. Click that like button and the notification for when the new videos come out. More DJI Avada 2 coming out very soon. Take care guys, and I will see you on the next one.